Right, so I thought we'd do this little video on changing the fuel filter. Uh, it's all part of the work we've been doing on our Rover 45 uh, 1.8. We've been doing the head gasket and the cam, but I thought we'd do this as a separate video as it might be something you would uh, want to do. Normally you'd do it as part of a service, but because of the lower mileage we do in the cars, we don't change the fuel filter every time we do a service, although we still try and keep it changed as regularly as possible. Uh, it sits at at the um, back of the engine bay right next to the uh, engine management system uh, and you've got a fuel pipe uh, in and uh, a fuel pipe out and it uses a union type of connection so you have to remove the um, bottom pipe and the top pipe and then slide it out of this little casing Right, so this is the uh, fuel filter we've bought. Uh, we bought it online and just checked that it was the right one for our car. Uh, it looks right and looks like the one that's coming out. It's got two nice um, rubber stops in it. Uh, also in the kit you get some uh, little washers and uh, yeah, that's uh, about it. Right, so we're now going to undo it. As I say, you have to undo both sides. Now, what we've done is um, we haven't had the engine running because obviously there is going to be some fuel leaking out. So really, you want the engine bay cold. And we haven't run the car for a couple of days. And uh, that hopefully means you've not got full uh, fuel pressure in the lines because if you've just run the car the pressure will hold in those lines and you'll probably lose a lot more fuel so uh, they're the sort of things we recommend doing don't have the engine bay hot wait to the next day if you've had the car running and also if it hasn't run for a couple of days if you've got that luxury you're not going to have so much fuel build up or pressure in those uh, lines as you can see we've got one spanner on the filter itself holding it whilst you undo that um, little nut on the union connection and as you can see what we've also done is put a rag there so any fuel that does spill out uh, doesn't run too much uh, into the engine but once again you can never avoid it completely And that's the fuel filter as you can see a little bit of fuel dripping out but uh, not lots of uh, fuel so yeah not too bad to remove and it comes out of that plastic casing fairly straightforward once you've got both those union connections removed so just comparing that they look um, roughly the same they're always going to look slightly different as they're from different manufacturers and as you can see this one's got out marked on it so you even know which way to put it so that the fuel flows through the filter the right way so putting it back in is kind of the reverse of removing it uh, the out goes to the top as the fuel comes in through the bottom and then comes out through the top What we're doing there is just gently easing it onto the bottom of that union uh, joint before you use the um, spanners to do it up fully tightly. And uh, we'll just remove the rubber stop and then out the top, keep that on as uh, long as possible so that no dirt really drops in. So yeah, we'll only remove that once we're going to put that top pipe in. So once you've got the bottom in, then it's a case of putting the top in. We do the bottom first because it's awkwarder to see, uh, whereas the top, obviously, you're on top and you can then get a look into that. And again, it's about lining it up and getting that union connection to uh, threadle in. <laughs> So 
So once you've got it all tight and you're happy with it, the next thing you need to do is check where it's not going to leak. Uh, we did have it once where it did leak or, or weeped and we had to undo it, redo it up and then it seemed to seal itself. So sometimes you do get that problem, it's normally easy to resolve. Because uh, it's electric pump, all you need to do is put the ignition on initially, uh, the pressure will build and you should see if there's any really obvious leaks. Uh, once you can't see any, then you can go on to start the car and if it's still not leaking, you know you've got it right. Right, so we've done that, we've put the ignition on, the pump comes on and builds pressure and uh, there's no leak. So now we'll start the engine and uh, check it's running through okay and uh, no other leaks develop. Right, so that's the engine running and uh, as you can see and we've checked there are no leaks so that is the job done. Hopefully that's been of use to you. As I say, often you would do it with a service. We don't always because of the mileage. And as we're doing all this other work and we're changing the filter, I thought I'd just show it as a separate video how to change a fuel filter on a Rover 45. As always, don't forget to look at our other videos, look at our playlists, and don't forget to look at some of the videos we've been doing recently on this car where we've been doing the... Um, hand bell and the head gasket uh, that series is all there now for you to access